r slash ask reddit what is the smallest lie you've ever told which had the biggest consequences once when i was around six or seven my mom brought home some delicious chocolate and gave some to me i loved the stuff and stole the bar that she had saved for my stepdad he comes home and my mom can't find the chocolate she asks me what happened to it i blame the duncan our dog Knowing that he often eats things off the counter, I didn't know at the time that chocolate was toxic for dogs. My mom goes terribly pale and rushes Duncan to the vet, and he has to throw up. I felt terrible about this as I thought it was because he stole the chocolate and was some form of punishment. The next day she brings home more chocolate. Nobody told me that it was for Duncan's own good that he was taken to the vet. So feeling bad for doing this to Duncan. I give him my chocolate this time thinking he deserved it after taking one for the team last time. Later that night my mom asks me how the chocolate was. This time I decided to tell the full truth and explain that I gave the chocolate to Duncan this time as I felt bad for getting him in trouble the first time. So another late night trip to the vet. And I finally was told that chocolate is toxic for dogs. Duncan was fine in the end. And for the rest of his life I snuck him meat and other things that would not kill him. Now the twist is that the very expensive vet's trips cost a lot of money. Which prompted my mom to take a look at our expenses. She found that the then stepdad was hiding an affair. And then got a divorce. TL. Doctor. I lied about our dog almost dying. Then almost killed him on accident. Causing my mom to get divorced. Edit. Sweet. Gold. Also yeah the chocolate probably wouldn't have killed the Duncan. But we didn't want to risk it. How do I get off this roller coaster? I want to get off Mr. You slash Bryce with Rice's wild ride. My first year walking to school alone was the 7th grade and I was late a lot. It got to a point that the teacher told me I would have to do all the day's chores. Putting chairs down in the morning. Wiping boards clean. Cleaning after lunch etc. If I was late again. Well the next day I was running late as usual. Being a lazy sob. I knew I had to do something to get out of doing the daily chores. So when the teacher asked me why I was late. I thought back on the assembly we had a few weeks prior on school safety. So I told the teacher that a strange man pulled up to me when I was coming into school grounds and asked me to come with him to see some puppies. I honestly thought that would be a good enough excuse and it would be the end of it. Ducking. Nope. School was suspended for the rest of the day. Police were called. My parents were called in. And I was interviewed for the entire day. Had to describe the man. The car. Everything. They ended up hiring a security officer for the grounds because of that incident and put in a few new cameras. We had monthly school assemblies because of it too. And it was all for nothing. Because less than a week later I was late again and had to do all the daily chores. Hey, you got that security officer a job and kids were more aware about pedophiles. Not too bad of a lie if you look at it that way. You could be the PI guy for a shady politician. I've told this story before but, during my undergrad I took a number of business courses. During one of these courses we were learning about a small company that produced high-end jam. The prof asked the class what we thought of high-end jam as a business. I said that it was a stupid idea. Why would I pay $20 for a bottle of jam when I could make it myself? I meant that as a rhetorical question but apparently my prof took my literally. When I was packing up at the end of class the prof came over to me and started asking me all sorts of questions about jam making. So I rolled with it. I lied and told him how my grandmother taught me how to make jam. When the right time to pick the berries was to ensure optimal jam, etc. I don't know how to make jam. I had no idea what I was saying but the prof bought it. We became buds. After every class we would chat. Mostly about jam. He wrote my reference letter to get into my competitive undergrad program and again when I applied for my masters. I owe most of my academic career to jam. I bet the prof knew you were lying. And just wanted to see how long you would keep it up. After seeing your outstanding dedication to this lie, he was happy writing you a letter of reference. Most of business is lying. Do you really think anyone is happy to do business with you? In college, the girls in the apartment downstairs asked my roommate and I if we'd like to join them at a concert a month away. Neither of us wanted to, and my quick thinking roommate said that date is my birthday. It wasn't. And we have other plans. They ended up not going to the concert. And we had forgotten about it. But on that date they called me downstairs to help them move something. 
I walked in the door, and surprise, a birthday party for me with about 15 people there, my roommate was just as surprised, I couldn't tell them the truth and just went with it, even got a couple small gifts, I always felt guilty about it. One of those girls was definitely into one of you guys. For real, though. I was at a job fair against my will, was trying to steal a pen so I could retire to a dark corner and doodle while everyone else did their thing. The lady caught me taking a pen, and I had to act interested in her sales pitch. Then a news reporter showed up. Before I knew it, I was in national papers as a general human interest story as a turnaround miracle story of how I'd come all the way from the barren plains of another country far away while kicking mental illness and addiction, and now wanted to become a nurse. I don't, nor have I ever, wanted to be a nurse, but that interview sure snowballed all out of proportion. All I wanted was a free pen. It's been 10 years and people are still asking how the nursing career is going. Are you a character on Seinfeld? This is totally a Seinfeld episode. I walked in on my friend finishing a conversation on her phone. She looked at me, petrified, and asked if I heard everything. I told her with a defeated face yes. She starts crying and leans on me L, telling me she is so afraid and doesn't know that to do. I did this in Italy as a joke, but obviously I am in deep water now so I just tell her everything will be fine and to call me whenever she needed me. Turns out she got pregnant and asked me to go to an abortion clinic with her. Her boyfriend scrammed. We are best of friends now. Holy shit that got real fast. Well, even if it was a joke at first, good on you for providing her the support she needed. When I was about 13 I called a little boy ugly. At the time, my mom's best friend was driving me home from school. Of course she told my mother what I said, and my mom asked me to not say things like that. I told her I didn't call anyone ugly. It was a little lie. At first I didn't know what she was talking about, and it became this big whole ordeal about my kid would never lie to me and why would I lie about this. They were best friends and they no longer speak because of this. All three of us were dumb and immature. I hate it when parents think their kids are saints. I would totally believe my long term friend telling me my kid did something like that over my kid saying they didn't. I guess I'd just look at the facts in any situation. My mom always believed everyone else over me even when I was telling the truth. In our situation I would probably just let it go. It seems like a very silly thing to lose a friendship over plus why would a grown woman lie about a kid calling another kid ugly? I guess the best thing to do is just use common sense rather than believe your child is incapable of lying. When I was little, maybe 6 or 7 years old, and I was playing with my cousin. He was is my best friend, even if we have grown apart in the last few years. Anyway, I told him if he jumps out of the tree onto the trampoline, he can get into the club. He jumped and jarred his knee. He screamed blow murder. There was no club. There was no entry test. The injury plays up till this day. It affected him when he was playing gridiron. He had to give it up. It affected him when he joined the army and again when he become a cop. I'm worried one day he dies because of that knee and I'll blame myself for it. Edit. Gridiron equals American football. I'll never make that mistake again. When I said I'm afraid he'll die because of his knee, I meant in some kind of job related incident. I know where he works as a police officer there are a lot of violent bogans. The worst kind of bogan. At least I made it into the club guy's tombstone. Guy's tombstone. Sounds like an action hero. Once when I was really young, maybe 6 or 7, my family was out for pizza and I told them when I was off alone that a man had asked me to come out to his van for candy. I have no idea why I did it. I'm sure I was just parroting something I heard in one of those Stranger Danger videos. But I threw it out there thinking people would be impressed I said no or something. Well all of a sudden there are police everywhere. The whole pizza place is basically evacuated. The police are grilling me about what he looked like and I'm making up a description on the spot. Something like blonde hair, green plaid shirt, etc. Well a few minutes later the police come out with a guy who looks exactly like the description I gave. And I quickly told them that it wasn't him. Thank god I didn't ruin that poor man's life. After all that, I thought it was done. But I got so many cards, and balloons and toys from relatives, family friends, 
teachers, there was a rat oop in the local newspaper, etc. It blew up into this huge deal. For a really long time I never told anyone, and for some reason a few years ago, in my late teens, early 20s, I remembered this incident and felt super guilty about it. So I called my mom out of the blue to explain that I made it all up. I'll still never forget her reaction. Huh, that's a weird thing to lie about. Edit. Oh good. My top post is about a horrible lie I told. Of course. I'll still never forget her reaction. Huh, that's a weird thing to lie about. I'm not sure what I was expecting her reaction to be. But it wasn't that. Something like. Huh, I always thought you were the weird kid because of that. When my sister and I were kids. I told her the Easter Bunny came through the drain. I thought it was cute. And since Santa came through the chimney I couldn't think of any other routes into the house. She cried for hours. Easter became the most miserable holiday for years until we grew up and she realized what an idiot I am. Today I learned Pennywise is the Easter Bunny. You want an egg? They're all hidden. They're hidden. And when you're down here with me, you'll be hidden too. I told my 3 year old son I was God just to be funny. No matter how many times I tell him I am not God. He still thinks I am to this day. Is your son's birthday the 25th of December? I had a coach who smelled oddly like Christmas. Found out years later that he was born the 25th of December. Everything checks out. When I was younger at a birthday party, a girl asked me for a quarter to call home for her dad to come get her. I told her that I didn't have one and she got a ride home from another parent. Later, I heard that when she got home. She found ambulances around her house because her father had died falling out of a tree doing yard work. I kept imagining that if I had given her the quarter, her dad would have come to get her instead of continuing yard work. If I had given her a quarter, maybe she would still have a father. Edited to fix some grammar mistakes and clarification. You really shouldn't beat yourself up about this. Just think about it, the situation had so many possible outcomes. His phone could have been turned off. She could have dropped the quarter down a drain. Hell. He could have just decided to get down before the moment he fell. Don't let your life be consumed by guilt for something that could have gone millions of different ways. He could have been reaching for his phone in a tree and fallen. I told my mom I hated her the morning she passed away. I was 10. She was 39. I wish I could take it back. Every single day. One of my favorite quotes from one of my favorite novels helped me through some similar guilt I had about my dad's passing. The only way out of the labyrinth of suffering is to forgive. My mother passed away when I was 13. And I wish I could take back every argument I ever had with her. Being in middle school, we argued a lot because I was a dumb little shit. It makes my heart heavy every time I think about the way I behaved when she was just trying to look out for me and help me grow up to a good man. I hope I've made her proud. Once when I was a kid I invited a kid that I bullied horribly over to my house for a sleepover because I was told I had to do something nice for someone I hurt by our priest during confession. I went to a catholic school. The next day after a pretty boring night we were playing in the snow banks and I lied telling him my foot was stuck and I couldn't get it out. He ran well over a mile back to my house to get my mom to save me. Well that kind of woke me up and made me realize this kid isn't that bad. After that day I never bullied anyone again. And 20 years later that turd that I bullied so terribly is still my best friend. Was the best man of my wedding. And the godfather of my first child. Whoa. You made it to the end? You're a ducking beast. I'll cut you a deal. Smash like and subscribe for more curated content bruh. It's free and that's a great price.